then uh, normally like uh, whether it is a like a like a positive connection or a frictional connection ideally we should test actually like because sometimes what happens the connector even if it's a positive connection that connection fixtures it has got a limited strength what is its strength we don't know like that and again for example this like like it's not that it is independent of the normal force actually like assume this block was not there it can easily pull out so this also needs it's not that it is independent of the normal force like then in the connection strength testing we put the we simulate the system in the laboratory like we have the blocks the same exact blocks then put the geosmetic between using whatever whether it is a frictional connection aggregate concrete concrete exact same thing we have to simulate then try to pull it, pull it out actually then we have here we can see we restrain the blocks like while pulling the block should not move actually it has to be restrained then we can apply the normal force because depending on the the height of the wall the normal force will vary then try to pull it out like that <laughs> then measure the uh, elongations and the force actually this shows the plan view like that and ideally preferably you should test a meter width then only like at least the the blocks it depends on the block size actually what happens the geogrid also if you test only a reasonably wide width you get the correct picture like if i test only as probably a 10 centimeters wide it doesn't reflect the actual situation then another problem is like the the wider the width then your uh, grip has to be stiff your system has to be stiff otherwise what happens here there are load variations actually you will have, we'll have to pull it uniformly so the wider then your testing becomes more and more difficult actually. this shows another uh, test arrangement this is the front side actually the grid actually the pulling is from this side you can see here again which type of clamping arrangement all those affects the results so here the vertical load is applied with jacks hydraulic jacks then you can see like after the test how the geogrid looks actually when you there it like really literally just tears actually there like you can see the damage kind of thing so this is the like uh, the horizontal displacement in inches then the applied pull out force here so this actually shows the normal force actually so here you can see as the, the normal force increases this way so as normal force is maximum you can find the the pull out force is also maximum so this is something like very similar to our direct shear test if i increase the normal force i increase the frictional resistance same way here we can see that and normally again uh, there is a criteria like one is ultimate failure the connection fails it's like our ultimate limit state then there is also a serviceability limit state like normally this is like uh, 20 mm 0.75 inch so this is taken as the serviceability limit state so again here we do two checks actually one is ultimate limit state taking the maximum load then the serviceability limit state taking the strength that like 20 mm lateral displacement then finally the result is expressed in, in this form of graph like we have normal load then we have the connection capacity here and we have like something like a like our direct shear but it is it may be highly curved actually like that so we can approximate into two straight line portions like this so this is the solid part is the p connection strength taken from this maximum load and this line is the serviceability like corresponding to this 20 mm lateral displacement so while checking the ultimate limit state i'll take this curve while checking the serviceability limit state i'll take this then another we may get this type of so so if you look at here the ultimate and serviceability not much of a change actually whereas here it is significant change 
So here, the thing is like each block, each grid or each geosynthetic, it's a unique like that. Like suppose I have one company's products, like we have let's say 40 kilo newton, 60 kilo newton, 80 kilo newton. There also you'll find the results are very much different actually. So if I have only the result of 40 kilo newton, I cannot use it for 60. Like each product, each block has to be tested. Then finally, we can have this type of like either uh, bilinear or trilinear. Normally that uh, actual data we approximate with a straight line. Then, then when we have normal load in this range for height in this range, I can use this part of the curve. Now, if when the height is more, I can use this part. Then finally, this is a limiting more than that like that. So in the calculation method, I can put these formulas, then calculate what is the connection capacity. So in the actual design, what do we do? Like suppose I take this layer, first I calculate what is the normal load on this. <coughs> so it will be the height of the blocks above this, like that. Then I go to this diagram, okay, for the, if this is my normal load, I go here, then pick up my connection capacity. That I compare with the tension in the, sorry, my connection load. So we have to ensure that the capacity, again with the factor safety, should be more than the applied load. See now, like if it is a vertical wall, like I know we have to simply, like uh, if I want to calculate the normal load, I have to just add up the weight of all the blocks above that. I get the vertical load. But now as the batter increases, increases, then the full weight may not be active here. So there was a concept of a, what is known as a hinge height. So here what happened, look at this layer. See now at this height, if you look at here, the weight of these blocks is entirely outside the heel of this. So they have this concept, okay, so this becomes my hinge, there is a formula also like taking moments of this portion and this portion about this and this formula is there. So basic concept is this, see when I have a battered wall, up to what height that weight is effective at the base like that. So normally effectively says if the batter is less than 8 degree, like we don't have to worry about hinge height, we can take the full height of the wall above that. But if my batter is more than 8 degree, I have to take this hinge height. So if I, my reinforcement here, then my normal load will be weight of this portion only, not the full weight of like that. Okay, that was the connection part. Like, uh, see now, um, in this there are many options like suppose uh, normally what do we find i find okay my tension it is safe but the connection capacity is not enough so i have two options like one is i reduce the spacing like that because earlier my spacing was 0.6 so i now make it 0.4 see now my tension reduces connection capacity remains same so it will become safe in connection another option is I put a something like a secondary, like I keep the primary spacing say 0.6 meter or 0.8 meter. So in between I put a secondary and this need to be short only, maybe 1.5 meters, 2 meters because the primary reinforcement takes care of the tension. At the connection load I put an extra like a secondary, so it reduces the load at the connection like that. So that way also is possible. <laughs> then. Coming to the drainage, like again, any geotechnical structure, drainage is a very important aspect. So if you look at earth pressure, like suppose I have a dry or moist backfill, I can get the, like the bulk unit weight or the dry unit weight. Suppose I take the earth pressure, it will be like K, like if phi is 30 degrees, let's say, K, it will be from the like 6.6 H. At any depth, it will be 6.66 times the height. See so now, if that same soil is submerged, then that pressure becomes one due to the submerged unit weight and then due to the water. So it's almost doubles actually. So, 
and we see this every day like see when do the failures occur like any retaining wall or a slope immediately after the rains like this is one reason. Then uh, here we can consider two cases like one is our reinforced soil wall is above the ground water table. Like one example is our like a the, the approach to a flyover or over bridge the entire embankment is above the ground level. So water table will be below the base only. Second is the groundwater table is above the founding level. So this is if I have a hillside retaining wall. So the groundwater table may come actually into the wall. So if I look at the first case, my water table is below the ground level and most of my structure is above the ground. See now what is the source of water? The only the rainfall, like only the rain falling on the top is likely to enter. Of course, maybe some capillary action but we are not much worried about that actually. So here see normally in this uh, approach embankment kind of situations so we have a road like a bituminous road or a concrete road then we may think it's like okay it's watertight so no touch of water is likely to go in. But again drainage may be important see first of all like okay the bituminous pavement it's not completely watertight it has cracks. So people say like even up to 50% of the water actually goes inside. Like. Then another reason is like see during construction like see the wall it takes maybe sometimes uh, like six months, one year, one and a half years to complete. So it may experience at least one or two monsoons during that. So at that time lot of water may enter. So that time itself that also drainage is important. See now in these situations like uh, one option is to minimize the ingress of water. If I can ensure that water does not enter into the structure that is one way of doing it. So like one is the pavement then we provide adequate camper then proper surface drainage. Then another option is using an impervious liner below the pavement actually like so that water doesn't goes into the structure. But again when you put an impervious thing you have to be a bit careful like finally uh, like we don't want like pore pressures things like that. So that also has to be used carefully like probably the should sometimes what happens we have to use fine grain soils like poor poorly draining backfills. So here this could be one option like so if I can prevent water getting into that soil then things are much better. Then Another is like uh, the reinforced soil itself acting as a drain and if you recall the specifications of reinforced fill we have to use a good quality granular fill that means the fines are less than 50 percent. So this has got a reasonably good permeability and it has got a large volume. So the entire reinforced soil fill can act as a drain. So there is no need of a separate drainage elements like I was told that like when the reinforced earth company like the France they came to India like maybe like 1995 around that time in the first structures they never used to have a special drainage layer. The logic was simple look my reinforced soil fill I am using a very good quality granular fill with less than that time used to be less than 10 percent fines the MRTH specifications was very strict. So then why do I need a drain like that but then like uh, because we know like India we want to be more cautious because we have a logic okay because on paper it is less than 10 percent fines but on the field it could be 15 percent 20 percent. So we know people know that. So they told no 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 like it may like without drainage it may be okay in France but not here and they were forced to use the drain. But normally it is a common practice like always people put a drainage layer behind the facing always do. Then sometimes we have this situation like we have the reinforced soil wall then we have a back slope actually. So here we, may, we have a pavement but here the soil is exposed and the earlier days I can tell you like people were literally scared actually like uh, uh, sometimes the consultant contractors they say if you have a situation if it rains immediately the wall will collapse like that. Like it's not like that provided we do proper drainage proper surface drain like that it can be 
done actually it's not there then uh, the second situation like the groundwater above the base of the wall like suppose here we have a like a cut and here we have a fill situation like that so water table may come like this so again the bs code gives us details into three cases one is like a small seepage then we don't have any special drainage like that we have the same reinforced fill good quality granular fill it acts as the drain sometimes we provide a pipe outside that in front of that and and again uh, see normally in india always we give the perforated pipe inside so that means the idea is we use a perforated or slotted pipe the water goes into the this pipe and then it is taken out of the wall like that but here if you look at the bs code they give outside uh, the thinking is main first of all putting this pipe here little difficult because we have two layers of geogrid maximum we have 0.8 meter vertical distance then this also we have to give a slope at least one in hundred like that so uh, detailing that becomes a problem like that secondly see now you put the pipe inside and it has become clogged what do we do if it is here we can always there is access it can always be cleaned so that is the idea like then second case is okay medium water flow then we provide a horizontal drainage like uh, it need not be continuous at certain intervals we can have a like a something like a trench drain or even like uh, pipes also is possible at intervals so the the seepage is collected here then goes goes out like that third case like okay there is a lot of water like probably this is the original groundwater level so now we don't want it to come into the our structure which means a lot of pore pressures so we want to intercept it here and take it out so there is a vertical like a chimney drain and a horizontal drainage blanket like so it will be more or less continuous so depending on the situation we have to design the drainage system and all this from the bs actually see now like in india what we do normally like we have this typical see most of the walls are for the approach embankments approaches to flyovers uh, underpasses rob's like that so typically we have this type of like reinforced soil walls and normally we provide a drainage bay here immediately behind the facing on both sides see now the mrth specification says it should be minimum 600 mm like earlier people used to like 300 450 like that it was okay but now there is a specification it has to be minimum 600 mm so normally like a aggregate like then sometimes we have a geotextile filter behind this it's possible like then there is a perforated collection pipe here at the bottom so sometimes it's given sometimes not given like uh, i have seen like many people psychologically they feel very secure okay pipe is there it's good like that but whether it works like uh, nobody knows actually because like your structure is designed for like 75 or 100 years so how long the pipe will work nobody knows and we have no way of cleaning it is also once it is inside and this uh, nowadays this aggregate is very costly so 600 of mm aggregate it costs a lot of money so now the option is for geocomposite drains there is actually a lot of money to be saved if i compare my uh, 0.6 meter thicker aggregate drain versus the geocomposite it may be probably like even 50 percent or even more cheaper like that so it is getting very very popular actually so basically it is put behind the facing see now um, if you look at the traditional that 0 0.6 meter aggregate actually it is not only a drainage layer it actually does many functions actually see one thing is the aggregate is very easy to compact we have to just like tamping it gets compacted actually so if i remove that aggregate layer see now my fill comes up to the facing because this composite thickness is a few millimeters only see now that fill i have to be compact I, I cannot leave it loose actually so that 
may create problem. But if I bring the heavy equipment very close to the facing, that also causes problem. So sometimes what happens to avoid that, we leave it uncompacted. So that also leads to problem. So this is one problem area. Second thing is like uh, suppose it is a precast panel. So to connect the reinforcement with the panel, I need a fixture and mostly these are galvanized steel. The hooks are embedded into the concrete. There is a probably a connector bar around which the geogrid is wrapped back. So the steel is susceptible to corrosion. So normally we galvanize that. But if my structure was metallic reinforcement, then there are conditions like, okay, my fill, electrical resistivity, pH, chloride content, all this I would have checked. But in a geosynthetic reinforced soil wall, like we don't check for that because geosynthetics are much more durable. But then the connections are metallic like that. So, and again, corrosion happens when there is water, like when the electricity flows. But earlier when my aggregate was there, Actually, it, it always remains more or less dry like that, not much water inside that. So probably that was a very chemically clean environment for the metallic fixture actually. See now again, I am bringing my soil very close like backfill. So that could be another problem like that. This kind, these are the kind of things we have to look at. But then what happens when there is a, um, like when you are speaking of uh, like cost economics of this magnitude, it's very difficult to prevent it, it will catch on like that. And again, uh, if you look at the, some of the fundamentals like, see normally we put the like drains vertically, like we are very fond of, like if you look at it is effectiveness, actually it's very limited, like, like I've taken this flow net. So the, look at the pore pressure, even with this drainage layer, it will be something like this. Still, it has a lot of pore pressures. But if you put a horizontal drain, like this is the, like actually the horizontal drains are horizontal or chimney, they are much more effective compared to the vertical drains. But then, I don't know, our practice is actually not uh, reflecting this. 